Hello, it's uh, Mark Chris from Memorial Sloan Kettering. And I've been spending time recently reflecting on the biggest uh, developments in uh, 2023. Uh, and I have to say that the breakthrough of the year, based on the amount of data presented and the importance of the data, is chemotherapy. That the breakthrough of the year is chemotherapy. I, I never thought I would say that. Um, many uh, folks have... Uh, uh, tried to relegate chemotherapy to the museum, but last year it became to the forefront. Let's start with neoadjuvant therapy. We now have multiple drug approvals for giving a checkpoint inhibitor in neoadjuvant therapy as what I would say is a new standard of care for patients with uh, locally advanced lung cancers that are surgical candidates. In all those trials, clear improvement uh, in uh, progression-free survival uh, by adding in a checkpoint inhibitor to chemotherapy, but the cornerstone of this regimen is chemotherapy. What about adjuvant therapy? I think one of the most uh, uh, astounding uh, uh, pieces of data last year was in the adjuvant realm, the trial comparing uh, adjuvant uh, osimertinib uh, to placebo in patients with EGFR mutant disease. In that trial, patients that received chemotherapy in addition to osimertinib, had a 7% improvement in five-year survival. Patients who had placebo, who got chemotherapy versus didn't, had a 9% improvement in five-year survival. Those are huge numbers for that kind of uh, uh, metric, and it happened with chemotherapy. What about targeted therapies? Again, I think people were astounded by adding in chemotherapy to osimertinib compared to osimertinib alone a nine-month improvement overall in progression-free survival. But I think in that uh, presentation of that data that, that has been made, the most uh, uh, remarkable one, uh, piece of data rather, is that in patients with brain metastases, chemotherapy on top of osimertinib improved progression-free survival. So not only did it improve progression-free survival, it did it with brain metastases where people think it just doesn't help at all. Uh, what about other newer agents with chemotherapy? Uh, Amivantinab, I would say, has uh, hitched themselves to chemotherapy. Uh, a trial in EGFRX on 20 compared chemo to amivantinab plus chemotherapy. There again, chemo is the common denominator. Amivantinab added uh, approximately uh, five uh, months of uh, improved uh, progression-free survival. Again, chemo use. Uh, so in the adjuvant, the neoadjuvant targeted therapies, uh, chemotherapy adds. What about second line? I think everybody was very uh, disappointed when uh, second line sonorastib gave a very tiny amount of progression-free survival improvement over docetaxel. Uh, I think we all want more for our patients that so we can deliver with docetaxel. Unfortunately, uh, the uh, roughly five-week improvement see with sonorastib was one that raised a question about the, the whole place of sotorastib here. Now, clearly, we've all seen patients have an excellent result with sotorastib, an additional uh, uh, option for treating patients, long uh, progression-free survival, high rates of response, good tolerability, even at the 960 dose. But, but it, it, in the randomized trial, wasn't better than docetaxel. And again, I think we we're disappointed with tusimitinumab, ramtancine, that it could not beat uh, docetaxel either. So I think the, the, rec the idea here is that chemo still has a huge place and still remains the uh, treatment that we have to beat. I think we're all very excited about the uh, antibody drug conjugates. I think everybody uh, sees them as another uh, advance that we've had. Uh, and clearly, uh, I think many folks have said that it is just a uh, a more precise way of delivering chemotherapy. And supporting that is when you look at the side effects, they're largely side effects of chemotherapy of these drugs across the board. Also, when you look at the patterns of resistance, the resistance there really isn't a resistance to the, a targeted therapy. It's a resistance to chemotherapy more than anything else. Um, so I think we're, we're happy that those things uh, are, that the ADCs are available. I think we were disappointed with the uh, uh, tusimitinumab remtansine because we thought that it could beat docetaxel here, but in truth, it didn't. Uh, and it, unfortunately, that pivotal trial led to the uh, end of the entire development program for that agent, as stated in a press release. So 
uh, the molecule of the year, the treatment of the year, it's chemotherapy. Added to targeted therapies, used with immunotherapy, um, and used now uh, attached to antibodies as part of antibody drug conjugates. Uh, I think it remains uh, more than any one uh, treatment are uh, very effective treatment for patients and, and deserves to be used. Um, a lot of choices here, and I think it's very, you have to be very careful to choose rightly. Uh, and you also have to uh, choose wisely, I should say. Uh, and you also have to be careful because chemotherapy has side effects. And the nice thing are, is that many of those side effects can be ameliorated, uh, and we have to make sure that we use all the supportive medications we can. So uh, who would have thought that chemotherapy would be the treatment of the year in 2023? for lung cancers.